I'm a local loan officer in West Palm Beach, Florida. I've been in the mortgage industry for the last eight years. I've worked in the industry throughout the country. I've closed over a thousand loans during my career, so I've seen it all. I'm on a mission to make mortgages both entertaining and educational. Welcome to Lending with Leah. This is the podcast for anyone who is thinking about owning in the process of buying or even owns their own home. So I'm Leah Bunning, licensed mortgage loan officer, and I am going to be your host. So welcome to episode two, everyone. We just finished up October, Halloween. I don't know about you, but Halloween is definitely my favorite holiday. Like beats Christmas by a long shot. And I know I might get some slack for saying that because there's probably a lot of Christmas lovers out there. I'm not saying it's a bad holiday, but Halloween is just, oh, there's something about it. And I just, I I love it. It's by far my favorite. And, you know, you should really see my house. During Halloween, I decorate my entire home. I turn the whole thing into a haunted house get all into it. I've been building up decorations now over the course of a few different years. And so the whole thing, like, I mean, I got the fog machine, the strobe lights, the ghouls. This year, I even went to Spirit and got one of their animatronics. So I've got this like big freaky doll. When you walk in front of her, she turns her whole head around. Like it's scary. I love the scary Halloween. So the just the freaky decor, haunted houses, the scary maze, um, all of it. Scary movies. Oh my gosh, I love scary movies. And, you know, I think one of the things that I love so much about Halloween and just being scared is that it's a safe place to be scared. It's a safe place to feel that fear essentially because you get that adrenaline rush right like if you're watching a scary movie you're at a haunted house something pops out it scares you and you feel that that fear but in the back of your mind too you know this isn't totally real and so it kind of gives you that safe space to feel this big emotion move through it and kind of triumph over it But so fear, Halloween fear, fake fear is a lot different than real world fear. So we are going to talk today more about fear surrounding home buying because fear is a very real thing. You know, it's, it's, it's not like Halloween. It's not a fake haunted house that you walk through and some fake monster jumps out at you buying a home is a real fear for a lot of people. And it can stop a lot of people from moving forward, from accomplishing their dreams. And so what is fear? Like really, if we take a step back and really kind of think about what it is. Well, the true definition of fear is that it's a negative, short lasting, high alert emotion in response to a perceived threat, and it can be measured as either a state or a trait. So one of the things I want to point out in this definition is perceived. I want to put some specific emphasis on the word perceived. So perceived means that it may not be an actual threat, but we perceive it to be a threat. Every person has their own individual lens, you could say, with which we see the world through. So we all have very specific life scenarios that have happened from the way we were raised, the events that have occurred in our lives, the people we've met, and all these things come together to create a lens, the way we perceive the world. So when this thing, uh, this threat comes up, if we perceive it to be bad, 
to be threatening us in some way, that is going to elicit fear. Now, one of the other things I want to talk about in this definition is how it says fear can either be a state or a trait. What's the difference? So a state would be a, kind of like a temporary moment in time. That thing happens, you perceive fear, and until that threat is dealt with, you are feeling it. It's just a state, it's a point in time. Now a trait though, on the other hand, I like to think of that as like a personality trait. So fear can get to the point where instead of it just being for this perceived threat, you are actually, you know, taking on the fear, almost like a personality trait as part of your existence. And so when fear arises in us, it's physical or psychological danger that is present and imminent. And I want to talk on that too. So physical or psychological. So fear isn't just, ooh, the scary monster jumps out at you and, you know, that's, that's a real thing. Or someone's chasing you down the alley with a knife. Ooh, that's a real physical thing. But also psychological. So we can have things that psychologically happen to us that can elicit the same fear response. And it comes up fast really fast. So this is where you get that flight or fight response. In actuality, it goes a layer deeper than that. So you have fight, flight, or even freeze. So now there's three common fear responses that are known and acknowledged. Fear, also, one thing that I think people forget about too is the fear of social rejection. So this is kind of a psychological thing as well. But we as humans, we're social creatures. We're built to be in connection with other people. And so it makes sense that a social rejection would cause fear within us. Social and physical pain are actually experienced in the same part of our brain as well. So again, it makes sense that even if something's not physical, we might feel that same level of fear if it's something just going on in our minds, it's a social thing around us, it makes sense. And fear, it's not all bad. You know, I think we think of the word fear and we're always like, oh, bad, bad, don't want to do that, don't want to feel that, not a good emotion. But it can be helpful. It's there for a reason. And I think it's important for us to respect and acknowledge that fear on what it's telling us. And really at the end of the day, as long as you're respecting it, acknowledging it how it should, and you're not letting it get out of control and really just start controlling your running your life, well, then it's doing its job. I want to take a moment and just respect it, right? Especially when it comes to buying a home. Buying a home is a big step. It's a big step. It makes sense that when you're buying a home, you might have some fears that come up. It's just, it's a big thing. It's the American dream. There's a lot of weight and there's a lot of pressure put on it. Also, getting a mortgage, that's scary. Why? You're sharing financial information with a stranger. Most of the people I talk to, I give them a call. They have no clue who I am. I'm just Joe Schmo on the side of the street giving them a call saying, hey, you want a mortgage? Great. Give me all your personal information. Everything you were told not to do, don't share your personal information. Keep it safe. Throw that at the door. I need it all. You know, and that can cause a lot of fears in people as well. Having to share all that information. So you see fears where people are scared that the information might get stolen or misused. Fears maybe people are afraid for me to see it. Maybe they aren't proud of their spending habits, their saving habits. And now here's a stranger who's going to be 
looking and digging through all of that information. Also, sometimes people have some skeletons in their closet. And that can come out sometimes when you're getting a mortgage. Buying a house can feel like a big commitment and that can be scary and that's okay. Also, want to tie it into when I was speaking about social rejection. Especially here in the U.S., homes are a status symbol. A status symbol, a social symbol, the, a social symbol. So this is what you outwardly put out to the world. This is where I live. Look at how much space I have. And that can be scary too, right? You know, if you can't afford the high-end home, you know, there might be some social fear surrounding that too. And I want to acknowledge all these fears. Like, it's okay. It's okay to feel these fears when you're buying a home. It's a big thing. You know, even, so I've, well, let me backtrack. I have bought two homes personally myself. Both times I was working in the mortgage industry. And both times, even I was afraid. So my first time buying, and I'll put a little more emphasis on this story because I think there was definitely a lot more fear surrounding my first home purchase than my second one. So when I bought my first home, I was actually living out in Arizona and I was getting ready to move to Charlotte, North Carolina. Now, when I decided to move to Charlotte, North Carolina, I had never been there before in my life ever. So I was living in Arizona, knew I wanted to live someplace totally different. Didn't really know where. So I was like, hmm, North Carolina. That sounds like a great state. That sounds very different from Arizona. Let's go to North Carolina. I was like, all right, but um, we're in North Carolina. So I pretty much like threw a dart at a map and I landed on Charlotte and I'm like, great. We're going to go to Charlotte. That's what I'm going to do. Didn't know anyone. No friends, no family, no job. Didn't know a soul. But I knew I was going to go. So I had planned and planned, and I was working on getting a job. So I had some job interviews lined up. I reached out to a mortgage loan officer and a real estate agent in the area. Planned a trip out there, so I flew from Arizona to North Carolina went on my job interviews, met my loan officer, met my real estate agent, and got pre-approved. I was like, okay, let's buy a home. Let's buy a home in some place I've never been in my life where I don't know anyone. It's my first time stepping foot in Charlotte. You guys, I was terrified. Absolutely terrified. But it just Even in spite of the fear, it felt right. There was something about it that felt right. So got my pre-approval, met with my real estate agent. She took me out to see some homes. So we spent two days looking at homes. And I had to put a lot of trust and faith in my real estate agent to make sure I got into a home that was safe in a safe, nice area. Um, Also, I was 21 at the time, so it's not like I had a big budget. So that was something that kind of worried me too, right? Where we're talking about the social rejection aspect of things. I didn't have a big budget to go buy some gorgeous home and some nice area. I had a small budget to work with, never been there. And I had to put a lot of faith in my real estate agent to find me something. And it was terrifying. Absolutely terrifying. And after spending a couple days going to look at homes, we went to one on the last day. Cute little home. Um, Mind you, I had to kind of cut back on a lot of my wish list items, too, to make sure that I could... uh, afford a home. If I had to put all my wish list items on the home, uh, it would have been out of budget. So we found this cute little home. 
and it felt right, you know? And so we decided to go forward, putting in an offer, and even that was scary. We wrote the offer. We were sitting at the dining room table and in this little house, and my agent's going over it with me. And mind you, this whole time, too, I've been working in the mortgage industry for three years. So I know what the process looks like. I know I've got a solid pre-approval. I know all these things, and I'm still scared. And so the point of what I'm trying to make here is that it's okay. It's okay to feel fear. We all do. Even when I bought my second home, I still had some fears. Maybe not as much as the first time because I had done it once before, and so it wasn't so new. But even then, it was still scary. I bought um, in 2021, so this was a height, right? All the home prices just skyrocketing, and I saw this home. I was actually posted on Instagram. I saw it, and I was like, oh, I love that home. I need to go see that home. So I left. I went to go see it, walked through it, and I'm like, oh, my God. I love it. I love this home. It's like they made it for me. Like, this is my home. But you know what was scary? And my my fear this time was a little different than my fear the first time around. My fear this time, though, was that when I went, it was the day the home came on the market, and there was so many people there. So many people. I mean, there probably had to have been 10 to 15 people there. And we're talking the first day it came on the market. And now I'm scared because I'm like, no, no, this is this is my house. I want this house. and But there's a lot of other people that want this house too. What happens if I don't get this house? And so worked with my agent, came up with a strong offer. Uh, and then that whole negotiating battle back and forth, especially at that time when you were competing, I was like sweating bullets. I couldn't think of anything else. I'm like, oh, God, please just let me get that house. And I was so scared that I wouldn't. And then I finally got the call. You got it. Your offer's accepted. And I actually ended up beating out 10 offers on the home. So it worked out. Um, You know, and even then, there was still fears. There was fears, is the home going to appraise? Because I didn't have a lot of extra money if an appraisal or if the home didn't appraise. So all of these things and all these fears, it's just, it's common. But it's not talked about that much. And so I wanted to start kind of just bringing some awareness to the fears of home buying. Acknowledging and respecting that it's okay. It's okay to have fears. And... I'm going to share a little bit to some of the specific fears that I hear as a loan officer because I get to hear them all. I've talked to a lot of people over the last eight years, uh, and I've heard a lot of fears. So one of the big ones that I get, especially that I get right now. So right now in this market, interest rates are high and home prices are high. It is not the funnest combination. So... I get a lot of people and they reach out and I say, oh, Leah, I'm afraid that I can't qualify or maybe I can't qualify for as much as I want. That's a big one right now. Can't qualify for as much as I want. Let's face it. Probably very few of you are going to go talk to a loan officer first and get pre-approved before you start looking at homes whether you've taken that step to actually meet with a real estate agent or perhaps uh, you're looking at homes on Zillow or Realtor.com, most people have started looking at homes before they actually know what their budget is. And so when you do that, you get this picture in your mind of this. This right here is my home, the white picket fence, this size, three bedrooms, two baths in this community with a pool and this and that. And then you get afraid that you can't have that or that you might not be able to afford that. 
you know, so that's a really common fear that I hear right now. One of the other fears that I hear is that I'm afraid for you to see my spending and savings patterns. I get this all the time. So especially when you're working with me and we're doing a pre-approval, I'm going to get documents up front from you to make sure that we're calculating your income correctly. We're going to verify that you have enough funds to close or at least where those funds to close are coming from. And sometimes people are a little fearful of that for whatever reason it might be. Maybe it's a personal, a personal thing. Um, Maybe there's something they want to hide. You know, you never know. I've seen, I have seen it all. Um, And that can be a little scary. And so sometimes I'll get a little bit of pushback on that. One of the other things I hear is that I'm afraid I'll lose my job and I can't make my mortgage payments. So I hear this one a lot more when we're talking about uh, renting versus buying. And I think kind of that commitment aspect of it. But one of the things I always say too is, look, anyone can potentially lose their job. No one's job is 100% safe. But regardless, if you have a mortgage or if you're renting, you have some sort of housing payment that's going to be due. And if you try to say, well, hey, I'm renting. If I don't make that payment, my credit's not going to be affected. Don't think that either. I have seen plenty of credit reports where there's been a rental on it and that that is affecting someone's credit. So... That's another fear that I hear, though, is people just afraid. You hear that, too, a lot now. In this market, there's a lot of fears about a potential recession on the horizon. We've had a lot of indicators for it. And so that causes a lot of fear surrounding jobs. Can I make my payments? Can I make a mortgage payment? What if I lose my job? You know, so those are fears that I hear coming up a little bit more commonly now. Uh, than I did when the market was just booming. One of the other ones I hear, and this is another good one, usually you hear it between buyers and renters, is I'm afraid I won't be able to move if I buy. Because, I mean, if you're like me, I've been all over the place. Arizona, Charlotte, North Carolina, Sarasota, Florida, out here in West Palm Beach, Florida. So I bounce around. I'm like a gypsy. We just go with the wind. And some people who are like that have a fear that if they purchase a home, they're going to be stuck with it. Like, oh, I can't move. If I have a home, I'm going to be stuck. That means I have to stay in that place. What if I don't like that place? Not always the case. Um, You know, when I first bought my home in Charlotte, I thought that I was going to be there forever. I moved to Charlotte with every intent of that being my forever home. Turns out I was only there for a year and a half. It was a stepping stone. And when I got the offer to come to Florida, you know, I had a little bit of that fear too, where I was like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, I have a house. Like, what am I going to do with my house? Do I sell it? Uh, Do I just, do I leave it? What do I rent it? You know, what do I do? So I get it. Those are some common fears that that can come up too. Another one that I get is, oh, and this is a good one for right now too in this market, but I'm afraid rates, interest rates, and home prices are too high. Okay, I get it. Home prices are high, interest rates are high, but you know what? This fear right here that I'm hearing now, I hear that all the time. I have heard that fear over the last eight years. Eight years ago, people were telling me, oh, the home prices are too high, the rates are too high. Because that was back when the rates were in like the threes. Uh, And even in... 2020 and 21, when we saw interest rates go down into the twos, you guys, I was still hearing this fear. It's too high. 
home price is too high. This is too high. So I'm just, I'm afraid. I can't, I can't, it's too high. Like I'm afraid to do it because I, I want to buy on the low, not the high, but it's always the high. Just from some food for thought. Fear, it's, it's a sign. It's something to tell us that we need to pause. We need to think and then decide how we want to move forward. But so many people will let fear run their lives. And they're going to let fear run their home buying experience. You know, when we're talking about how fear, you have the three responses, right? The fight, flight, or freeze. And you kind of see the same thing boil down in the home buying situation. When people get scared, they're going to fight. Uh, I, lo- I love my fighters, my fighting clients. Uh, I love them because they're like, no, I'm going to do whatever I need to do to get a home. And they fight a lot. Um, and it's great. Eventually, you know, they really get there. But the two that tend to cause the most trouble is going to be a flight when you run away. I've seen a lot of people run away. Um and a lot of people run away when they actually had a pretty good deal and then, you know, wait too long and and now that deal is not there anymore. You know, for example, recently, this was probably about four weeks ago, and I was speaking with a client and they found a home, went under contract, and we got a, a great rate for them. So it was probably high fives. And they ended up having a fear of the home. They're, you know, second thoughts, some kind of almost like home buyer remorse a little bit. And so they ended up backing out. And when they went to go find their next home, the interest rates had jumped up to the sevens. And so that fear that caused them to run away from that home now caused them greater than a percent in their interest rate and monthly payment. Also, freezing. So that's another thing too. If you freeze during the home buying process, you know, that kind of can elicit the same thing as flight. You know, you're just, you're too scared to do anything. So you just don't, you don't do anything. Um, But when you're buying a home, especially if you're in the middle of the process of buying a home and you're under contract for something, if you if you freeze and you freeze for too long, you can you can lose. There's deadlines and things like that. And if you wait too long, you can pass those and lose the opportunity. There's so many what ifs. The world's full of them, right? What if I get priced out of the market? What if I can't afford it? What if I lose my job? What if this? What if that? But what I would challenge you guys to say is switch up your what ifs. What if I don't buy? What if I lose out? What if I regret not buying? What if I don't get a chance to build that equity and that wealth for my family? Switch the what ifs around and think about what you might be missing out on if you're not buying. And it's a great segue to come that next week or or the next episode that we do, we're actually going to be discussing some different strategies on how to overcome those fears, right? We'd spent all this, all this time talking about how scary it is, the fears that are out there, common fears that we hear. So next week, we're going to get into the nitty gritty on how to overcome those. So follow me on Instagram, Facebook, or TikTok, uh, Lending with Leah, or you can give me a call today to discuss your specific situation. Remember, it's always confidential and free.